Good morning. Welcome to Grace Church. I'm Pastor Alan. Wonderful to see you on this Christmas Eve. Um, we decided not to do a, a service this evening, just to do one since it's Sunday and we're right before uh, Christmas Day. We thought this would be just perfect. We'll do our normal service. Next year, I looked, I think it's on a Tuesday, so we'll do an Eve, Christmas Eve service next year. Um, like Christmas Eve in the Eve, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Well, just thank you so much for coming. So today, we're not doing announcements. We're not doing prayer requests. We just want to have this time of, of readings from the Word, of song, and children are going to come up and do a little a wonderful thing for us. And uh, yeah, that'll be fun. And so what we'd like you to do, if you want to stand when we're singing, please do. If you want to remain seated, that's okay, right? Because it might be a lot of up and down. So just as you will in that regard. When the children come up, please remain seated so that we can all see them and, and uh, enjoy them. And uh, I think at any part, if you wanna sing along, please sing along because uh, we, just, we just wanna enjoy this time together, celebrating the Lord, our Savior. And so, um, well, what more can we say? If God is with us and is for us, who could be against us? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. What a glorious day it is that we can come together and the sun is shining after that heavy, heavy rain and, and um, Lord, you're just, your creation is so glorious, all the things you have made. And today especially we come before you and we remember and we celebrate your love for us, that you loved us so much that you sent your son. And uh, we, we celebrate that today because it means everything. It means everything in the life of a believer, because without that, what is there, Lord? What is there? But you have revealed yourself to us. You have drawn us near to yourself, and uh, we have eternal life in you, and we are so blessed. And so this day, we celebrate you. We thank you for all things. We praise you, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> but you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. For you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient of days. Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David 
to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. My reading today is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 12. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in manger. Certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay tending their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, Noel, Noel. Noel, 
Luke 2, 13 to 20. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. We have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, that the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Try that. Oh, right. 
you know, it's, um, it's at this time of year, every year, that as believers of Jesus Christ, we, we gather together to remember our, our Savior's entrance into the world as a baby boy. And not just any baby boy, right? But because Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. And this, through the direct intervention of God, through an angel, by the Holy Spirit, and he is Emmanuel, God with us. And uh, this word, Emmanuel, um, first used by Isaiah seven, some 700 years earlier. And, it, and when he used this, it was to be a comfort to Israel. And the Lord asked uh, that and ordered it this way. And, and he said that despite, that they would know that despite the enemies that would come against them, despite evil, despite invasion, despite the fact that they would re be removed from their country and would lose so much and the pressure of false gods that there was the true God, there was Yahweh, that he was with them. But the, that Isaiah, uh, that message from Isaiah goes even deeper still because he was speaking not only to the people of Israel, but, and even divided and broken that Israel was, but he was speaking to the future of the entire world, divided and broken as it was. Abba Father was revealing his redemptive plan for all the nations, all the peoples, all the world. So, today we celebrate, and tomorrow especially, we celebrate the heart of God for us, right? That we are his creation, that he has not forsaken us, that he has not left us helpless in an evil world, but instead he sent his son, Emmanuel, to save us. And this is the hope of Christmas, not turkey and, and ham dinners and, and uh, Christmas trees and decorations and, and cards and gifts. These are wonderful things and are a great blessing. Um, who, uh, you know, I know some, sometimes people really come down on that and that's not what Christmas is about. But when you're showing love to one another in your family and you're sharing a meal together, and you're doing all of that, and you keep in the context that it is Christ we are celebrating, right? Not, not gifts in, in the holiday, but Christ himself, then it is a blessing, all those things are. <laughs> and this is the hope of Christmas. Because the, from the moment he was conceived in Mary's womb, the world would never be the same, right? There, there was now an answer to hopelessness. There was uh, the sense that fear was overcome. Death was defeated. Sin was atoned for. Eternal life had come. Emmanuel, God was with us. You see, once Je Jesus was conceived as a person, God's plan for us, for mankind, could not be halted. Nothing could stop it. And if I just think of Colossians 2.9, for him in the fullness of deity dwells bodily. And we have this truth amongst us that, that Jesus was both fully man and fully God, that in him the deity, deity dwelt bodily. Yeah, so Jesus did have to grow, right? We read that he grew in wisdom and stature, becoming uh, into manhood in order that he would fulfill all of the things that were prophesied that the Messiah must do and must fulfill. But once he was born, Emmanuel, God was with us and he is with us. Because even as Jesus paid uh, that price for our sin on the cross, even as he lay in the tomb, even as he was resurrected back to life, even as he ascended on high, sit at the right hand of the Father, and then the Father said, I have, Jesus says, I have been given all authority, all authority over heaven and earth. Still the promise of the Father in his Son is that we would never be alone again, that we would never be alone again. And Jesus says that, that he would not leave us alone. So God's presence no longer would dwell in the, the holies of holies and the tabernacle or in the temple like it used to. Um, or only would it dwell in the heavenly realm, not there only, but within each one of us who has put their trust in Jesus Christ. For the Holy Spirit 
is the promise. It's the fulfillment of Emmanuel as well. Because though Jesus ascended to the Father, yet Holy Spirit God is with us. And I think for me that, uh, that is such a comfort. It always is such a comfort. And that's why he's called the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the one who watches over us and teaches us and guides us and remains with us. So in this season we celebrate, we remember Jesus coming into the world. But we celebrate so much more than that because we celebrate eternal life now and forevermore, Emmanuel, in each of us. And I just want to read to you um, a short passage from John 17, 20, 26. This is Jesus' priestly prayer, we call it, where he is praying for the disciples, and he prays to the Lord, Lord, not that you take him out of the world, that you protect him in the world from the evil that is in the world. And then, in, which is in verse 20, from him praying for the disciples to also praying for us. And he says, I do not ask for these only, for the disciples only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. And that last verse, I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. That's what it's all about right there, folks, right? That the Father sent Jesus because he loves both the Son and us so deeply. And he wanted us to be in right relationship with him, in close relationship with him. And so he made a way in his Son. And we have that now, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is love. And sending his only begotten Son was not just a manifestation of that love, but a, a complete fulfillment of that love, now and forevermore. Emmanuel, God is with us. And that's what Christmas is all about. Amen. For us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And on, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On, on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. So he's the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Think about who he is for you. What, is he, what does he mean in your heart? His, his coming has made a difference for you in your life. His, is, is he your hope? Is he your uh, comforter? Um, so as you think about that, the song we're going to sing next is the first time we've done it here, so some of you may have heard it, some of you may not have. Um, and But the main over, the, the theme of it, the name of it that keeps coming and going around and around is, He shall reign forevermore. So forevermore, He is going to be what you need. So um, I, I would think that probably about halfway through, as you hear that chorus go over and over, um, you'll probably want to stand and join in as we finish up this beautiful service. 
He shall reign forevermore. Denise is going to start it. Especially, um, you know, we're reminded so much of the gift of life we have. And um, what can be greater than that? What greater thing is there in our life? You know, we think of marriage and, and what a foundational, beautiful, and wonderful thing it is in our life. We think of our children and how important they are and, and how much we've been blessed by them. And, and even when we struggle with them, yet 
Um, they are a blessing and we, we just are so grateful when they know the Lord and, and we've been part of that, leading them into that relationship with the Lord because we know what it means, because we know it means eternal life. And, and so yet the greatest thing the Lord says to us is that uh, to love him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength. And then as we have set on our mugs and our sign, um, to love your neighbor as yourself. And we believe in that. Uh, with all our hearts and this day especially reminded that and so I just pray as you go from here that the Lord bless and keep you that the Lord causes his face to shine upon you and that he be gracious unto you and give you his peace especially in this time Um, may his peace be upon you